When it comes to PC gaming, sometimes I do recommend waiting out for something, especially if it's just around the corner, and more importantly, if it's bringing a lot of improvements, especially for gamers. And now in this case, with AMD's upcoming Zen 6, there's been kind of a big leak, and that is at a recent financial analyst day where they talk about Zen 6 and how it's gonna be on two nanometer. Now for today's video, I'm gonna be focusing on the mainstream desktop gaming CPUs and talking in particular about the eight core improvements, which I feel are now going to be 12 core single CCDs, which is one of the reasons why this is gonna be such a huge upgrade. And I feel if you can wait it out a few months, then you definitely should wait it out, especially if you want the best in slot flagship that's gonna bring so many improvements. And these improvements aren't just going to be in the form of better clock speeds, but there's also so many other very big improvements coming to Zen 6 that I think you might wanna wait out for. But let's get into all those details and then some right after today's video sponsor. Do you need to get Windows activated and don't want to spend stupid amounts of money on a key? Well, if that's you, then today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, has you covered. For as little as $21 for Windows 11 Pro or $13 for Windows 10 Enterprise, you can get activated instantly. And also, don't forget to use the coupon code BFTYC for a big juicy discount. Links in description below. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. Now, AMD have for CES, they've got a huge announcement planned and I do believe this coincides with this leaked slide that we're seeing here that talks about Zen 6 being on two nanometer. Now, when I do my research on two nanometer, it's a very big upgrade in terms of improvements, especially over the four nanometer that they're using in say the Zen 5 CPUs, for instance, the Ryzen 7 9800X3D. Now, when we looked at the Ryzen 7 9800X3D, it wasn't a massive improvement over the 7800X3D. And in fact, we've got a video coming out very soon showing the differences between those two CPUs and how the 7800X3D, even to this date, is one of the best value flagship gaming CPUs you can get because it really is in a similar league to the 9800X3D. However, the 11800X3D and possibly the 11700X, which I feel is going to be the naming for this next generation of Zen 6 CPUs because usually they step it up too because then for instance, the 10,000 series, they can leave that naming scheme to the mobile CPUs. I feel with these two CPUs in particular, what we're gonna see first of all is a huge improvement in core counts per CCD. And that's because the density of the cores themselves are going to be a lot greater on this two nanometer node. But furthermore, the improvements in the node themselves in terms of efficiency and clock speeds is also going to be achieved with these new core types from AMD. And first of all, these 12 core count single CCDs, as opposed to what we're getting on Zen 5, for instance, with the eight core CCDs, I do believe this is gonna be a reality, firstly, because the TSMC two nanometer node is going to be more dense, but also it's gonna provide better efficiency, actually big efficiency improvements. And furthermore, it's going to also give higher clock speeds, especially with the nodes that are installed to come after that and it just makes perfect sense for AMD at the upcoming CES to announce the Ryzen 11,000 series to the desktop gamers, as well as a single end client user, considering they gained a huge amount of market share in this particular field. And they definitely made this also known at the financial analyst day, posting some big revenue gains as well as market share gains in this sector in particular. And although unfortunately, AMD didn't directly focus on the gamer at this financial analyst day. They did mention the Zen 6 and the timeline and also the two nanometer, which from this, I believe we can derive a lot more information plus other details that are already known. And the next big improvement we're gonna move on to with these CPUs and why if you're waiting out for flagship CPUs, I think you should maybe put the brakes on the 9800X3D for now and wait for say the 11700X or the 11800X3D, for instance, is because they're going to use a new Infinity Fabric. And this time around is actually gonna be a massive improvement because they're essentially bridging the gap, so to speak, and taking out that gap that would traditionally exist between the CPU and the IO die. And they're pretty much almost directly connecting it using this next generation Infinity Fabric design, more or less similar to what Intel is doing with the Ultra CPUs, which 
This relates back to something that I heard at Taiwan earlier in the year. And it was actually pretty crazy because I heard from sources in Taiwan that AMD and Intel with their x86 CPU designs are essentially gonna become 80 to 90% similar in their layouts. And so there's not gonna be a huge difference in the coming years between these two CPU manufacturers. And that's just what I heard. But in terms of the performance advantage right now, we definitely know that AMD has this, especially with their X3D chips for gamers, which are doing extremely well, especially for the power efficiency that they use versus say a 14900K or even the Ultra 285K, which for Intel, I would love to see them. And I've said this in the past, I would love to see them copy the X3D design and bring out their own version of it for gamers with just straight P cores and a lot of extra cash. Now, speaking of that cash, it's actually gonna be improved because of the more core counts that are being used and the higher density in the node. You can expect roughly a 50% increase in cash sizes, both on the normal CPUs as well as the X3D gaming chips. Even if it was just a static upgrade of eight cores to 12 cores, the gamers will still benefit greatly from the increased core counts and ultimately the increased cache counts. They're coupled in with the fact that the Infinity Fabric is going to lower the latencies as well as increase the throughput speeds. I do believe this could be a massive improvement, not just in terms of your benchmark numbers and your FPS numbers, but also it could make a very snappy experience for people who are editing videos. So increased core counts, lower latencies, and also better efficiency. This one is definitely one to wait out for, especially because I believe the announcement for these CPUs is going to be the 11,000 series coming up with CES 2026 in the USA. So those improvements alone are gonna make it so that the 11,000 series will be a huge upgrade, especially over the 9,000 series, I believe personally, but also when we look at the new node that they're gonna be using from TSMC, the two nanometer, this has the potential to, of course, with those uh, boasted higher performance figures, take the CPU to perhaps even an all core speed of over six gigahertz on 12 cores. I do believe this could be realistic because TSMC are very confident in their yields. Plus they've also been showing very big progress, especially when we look at say, even the Ryzen 9000 series over the 7000 series and the big uh, increasing clock speeds that we got with those CPUs alone. Though continuing on here, there's still another big upgrade that we haven't talked about yet. And that is the rumored IO die that they're gonna be using with Zen 6. And previously they've used a six nanometer input output die that's used that older Infinity Fabric. And as we saw with the Ryzen 9000 series, the integrated memory controller on that was pretty much the same as the Ryzen 7000 series, at least for gamers. And this led it to have really a limitation there of 6,000 megahertz. Sometimes you can get up to 6,200, 6,400 with those lower latencies. And that was pretty much the best in slot for gaming. But we do know that there is much more capable DDR5 RAM out there going to 8,000 megahertz plus and even with really good latencies. And so with this new IO dial three nanometer, I'm hoping that we'll see some big improvements here too. And that will all just come together to show some absolutely massive gains on Zen 6. And in particular, I do believe AMD will go with their typical strategy of releasing the 11700X and also their 11950X first. And then of course the X3D chips will come out after that when they've got the yields together and they've also got enough stock because those things will just sell incredibly well as we have already witnessed in the past with the Ryzen 7 9800X3D and even the 7800X3D. Though the final piece of the puzzle to talk about here is I do believe since it's gonna be DDR5 still, I think it's going to still be AM5 and perhaps we might see in the future like an AM5 plus motherboard come out with PCI Gen 6 support. But I think for now, you'll pretty much have the CPUs come out and all you have to do is update your BIOS and you can get the new Zen 6 CPUs working on your AM5 motherboard. I do believe that is going to be the scenario here. And then the last thing I know you guys are gonna ask me in the comments is what about pricing of these new CPUs? And so I do believe since TSMC are charging more for their nodes, 
and inflation has just been a constant thing in the last few years, I do believe you will see yet again another price increase on these um, new 12 core CPUs, especially this time around since they're going to be 12 core single CCDs versus eight cores. Anyhow guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button and also let us know in the comments section below what you think of the upcoming Zen 6 CPUs, which I'm pretty sure will be announced at CES. And yeah, love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. With that aside, I'll catch you in the next one very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.